The following is a production of the Computer Information Systems Department at the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Hello and welcome. In this video, I will briefly demonstrate how to do a walkthrough of some pseudocode. To follow along, you will want to download and open the Word file Some Numbers Pseudocode and the Excel file Some Numbers Program Level. Both of these files will be posted in the content section of Blackboard. For this problem, we are going to assume that what we want is to be able to add a set of numbers and report their sum and average. We will end the program by inputting the kill flag or value negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For this example, we will use the test values 7, negative 2, and 4. Before we get started, Let's make a few mental notes. As usual, we will use camel case, and variable names will start with lower case letters. Quick reminder, it's called camel case because the rise and fall of the upper and lower case letters looks kind of like the humps on a camel's back. Module names start with upper case letters and end with open and close parentheses. This is the module header or definition. The body of each module is defined by open and close squiggly brackets. The body contains instructions and commands that will be performed when the module is called. When we look at our pseudocode, we can see that on the far left, the pseudocode lines are numbered. So if I say, where is the definition of the module initvars, you could tell me initvars is defined at line 26. And if I asked, which lines of the code make up the body of the initvars module, you could say lines 27 through 29. Finally, if I say skip from line 8 to line 20, I mean that when a function such as process num is called from some point in the pseudocode, the control of the program jumps from line 8 where the module is called to line 20 where the module is defined. Finally, at the end of the body of a module, control of the program returns to where the module was called. So once I get to the end of a module, I return to where it was called, which was line 8. So we see that on the left, we have pseudocode designed to create a program to adjust the problem I described earlier in the video, adding up a set of numbers and outputting their sum and average. On the right, I have a detailed walkthrough of the pseudocode. In this walkthrough, the first column uses color to show us when we walk into major sections of the code. The first module that initializes variables, the second module that gets the initial input from the user, and then three successive loops through the while statement, shown in various shades of purple, blue, and green. On the fourth attempt at the while statement, noted in pink, the while will fail because num has been set to the kill flag, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The final step is to output the final numbers at the end of the program, shown in yellow. The second column of my program level walkthrough notes the corresponding number that I would execute in my pseudocode. And the third column shows the annotations for my code. The remaining columns note my variables and the values of those variables, as we have done since the earliest weeks of this class. Let's walk through the first several steps of this program together. In pseudocode, we always start with the main module. This is line one of our pseudocode. In our program level walkthrough, we see that we are executing line one and our note says, begin the main module. Please note that the words module, method, and function are essentially interchangeable in computer programming. The opening parentheses of line two indicates that I step into the body of the main module. Next on line three of the pseudocode, I want to call the init vars modules. To do this, I skip from line three down to line 26. And when I get to line 26, I begin the init vars module. 
On line 27, I step into the body of the initvars module, and on line 28, I execute the body of the initvars module. At this point, I update values of the variables sum, count, and average in the working memory of my program level walkthrough. The next line, line 29, tells me I am at the end of the body of the initvars module, and I can return to where the module was called which was line 3. Having completed the module call on line 3, I can now go to line 4. Line 4 tells me to call the module get num, so I skip to line 31 and begin the get num module. At line 32, I enter the body of the get num module. At line 33, I get input from the user, which is the value of the variable num. At line 34, I output the value of the variable num so that the user can see what they've entered. At line 35, I reach the end of the body of the get num module, so I return to where the module was called, which is line 4. In this code, I left line 5 blank just to provide some visual space. At line six, I begin the while loop. The first thing I want to do is consider the conditional statement of the while loop. In this case, the while will execute if the value of the num variable is not equal to negative one, two, three, four, five. On the first iteration of the while loop, the conditional statement evaluates as if 7 is not equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this evaluates as true. 7 is not equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since this conditional statement is true, we enter into the body of the while loop and execute the commands inside it. At line 8, we call the process num module. So we skip down to line 20. At line 20, we begin the process num module. At line 21, we step into the body of the process num module. At line 22, we call the module update vars. So we skip to line 37 and begin the update vars module. At line 38, we step into the body of the update vars module. And at line 39, we add the value of the variable sum, which was initially set to zero, and the value of the variable num, which was input by the user, and right now is set to seven. And we assign that value as the new value of the variable sum. So zero plus seven equals seven. And we set that as the new value of the variable sum. At line 40, I want to update the value of the count variable by 1. At this point, I want to point out that in this example, I am not outputting the value of the count variable, but I do need to keep track of how many numbers I input. Why? So that I can calculate the average of the numbers I input, which I do at line 41. At line 42, I am done with the body of the update vars module and I return control of the program back to where update vars was called, which was line 22. When I'm done calling update vars at line 22, I'm ready to go to line 23, which asks me to call the get num module. It's worth noting, at this point, I'm effectively getting the next number in the set. This is the number that the next iteration of the while loop will examine to see if it wants to keep executing the body of the while loop. So from line 23, we jump to line 31 and execute the get num function, which I've already demonstrated in this video. This will get the next number the user wants to input, which is negative two. In the program level walkthrough, I update the num variable to go from seven to negative two. After I've executed the get num module, I return to line 23, and the next line, 24, is the end of the process num module. 
So I jump from line 24 to the line that called the process num module, which was line 8. I've completed the call to process num, so I go to line 9, which is the end of the body of the while loop. At this point, I'm done with the first iteration of the while loop. So I jump from line 9 to line 6. And I start the while loop over again by evaluating the conditional statement of the while loop. At this point, num is equal to negative 2. And negative 2 is not equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I again enter the body of the while loop and begin processing. The steps we follow will be exactly the same as we just went through, just with different numbers and variable values. Effectively, we will perform second and third iterations of the while loop. At the end of the third iteration, the user will enter the value negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the next value for the num variable. When the while conditional statement is considered for the fourth time, the conditional statement will be if negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is not equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this statement will evaluate as false. So the program jumps out of the while loop and goes to the next line beyond the body of the while loop, which is line 10. Line 10 calls the module report out, which will output the required numbers. At line 11, we have a note to stop the program. This is not a line you will see in real code, but it is a line you will commonly include in pseudocode. The final line of the program is line 12. We've reached the end of the main module, so the program will terminate. If you have any questions about this video, please email me or call me during office hours. Thanks and have a great day.